They're big, they're bulky, and boy, can they move stuff. Wheel loaders are drivable, heavy machines. You see them on construction sites moving dirt, at landfill sites moving garbage, and in the winter, you see them all over, clearing large quantities of snow. They start by assembling the 100-odd steel components that make up the front frame. These parts are so heavy that workers have to use industrial strength magnets to move them. Take note of those pieces with the holes in them. We'll come back to them later. Workers measure and mark exactly where they'll weld the front frame parts together. You might not think precision is all that important when it comes to building a 20-ton hunk of machinery, but it is. Being just a couple of millimeters off can cause major problems. The preliminary welding is done by hand. Workers tack the parts together. They do the same with the 100 plus steel parts that make up the loader's three other sections. The rear frame, the driver's cab, and the moving arm at the front called the boom arm. Once the manual welding is completed, robots take over to do the major welding. They solder about 90% of the wheel loader. Now that the front frame is solidly fused, it undergoes a final machining. Remember those parts with the holes in them? They're what enable the boom arm to move. A computerized sensor now measures those holes and calculates how to cut them to the exact specifications of the engineering design. The computer then guides the machining tool to tailor the holes to spec. First, a preliminary cut. Then, after some oil lubrication, the final cut. When this operation's complete, the front frame will join the other sections at the paint shop. After painting, workers begin the final assembly. They position an axle under the front frame and another under the rear. Then they affix the frames to the axles with heavy-duty bolts. They mount the diesel engine and transmission in the rear frame. After assembling the cab, they install it onto the rear frame then connect the wiring for the controls. Now comes the boom arm. Remember those front frame parts with the holes? Workers line them up with holes on the boom arm, then insert giant steel pins. This creates a pivot mechanism, enabling the arm to move up and down. The moving parts must fit together snugly, but not so tightly as to restrict movement, which explains why welding and machining precision was so crucial. Once they've tested the boom arm's hydraulic lift system, workers install the tires, which are almost two meters tall. Using a specially calibrated torque gun, they bolt the tires to the rim, 32 bolts in all. The wheel loader is fully assembled. Now the boom arm can be equipped with a forklift, a broom, or a big shovel called a bucket. <laughs>